Good evening, everybody. Welcome to The Real Report. Happy Saturday. Thank you for your support. Battling the forces of censorship, closing in on 21,000 views. Thank you to the new subscribers. There's about eight of you. And a huge thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone for the comments and dozens of likes on the last video. It is really making a difference, so keep it up. Smash the like button through your desk. Hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. Share with friends, family, your dog, and comment down below. It's the only way we're going to get out of this canyon again even if you're lazy just smash a thumbs up in the comment section down below we're going to be covering current events on russia ukraine and the u.s's continued nuclear rhetoric as we escalate tensions across the world and china has also re-entered the news cycle here on your screen real quick and then we're getting into the headlines you can see we're still getting capped at about 1400 impressions uh, things start to look great and once we get just above a thousand uh, youtube decides that uh yeah you're done so keep it up Again, hit the like button, comment down below. It's going to count as interaction. And thank you to everybody for subscribing. Now, the U.S. speeds up plans to store upgraded nukes in Europe. Wonderful. The United States has accelerated the fielding of more accurate versions of its mainstay nuclear bomb to NATO bases in Europe. Arrival of the upgraded B-61-12 airdropped gravity bomb originally slated for next spring is now planned for this December. For potential use by U.S. allied bombers and fighter jets amid heightened tensions over Russia. Hopping down into the article, nuclear-related moves however modest they might be, could have unintended consequences. Yes, a word from the wise, all actions have consequences. They may or may not be the ones you intend or planned on, however could be escalatory. We'll see, he said. The B-61 is a family of nuclear bombs first developed in the early 1960s. 10 billion B-61-12 life extension program is managed by the Department of Energy, including about 100 bombs stored at air bases in Germany, Italy, Belgium, the Netherlands, and Turkey. Ukraine's atomic agency says Russia likely preparing a nuclear terror act as, again, they go tit for tat, pointing fingers at each other, standing in a circle. Uh, dirty bomb. No, it's you. No, it's you. No, it's you. So we'll see how things develop there. Uh, the interesting takeaway is that Putin says, absolutely not them. Putin blasts the West nuclear narrative. It doesn't make sense to use nukes in Ukraine. After deploying another 300,000 troops, he says, we see no need for that. Putin said, also, there is no point in that, neither politically or militarily. He underscored, it doesn't make sense for us to do it. Never said anything proactively about the possible use of nuclear weapons by the Russians. Now, all means available to protect Russia didn't amount to nuclear saber-rattling, but was merely a response to Western statements about their possible use of nuclear weapons, he said. Particularly mentioning, again, this is all statements from Putin, so quote that, mentioned Liz Lettuce Truss, saying in August that she would be ready to use nuclear weapons if she became Britain's prime minister, a remark which he said worried the Kremlin, which, good thing, she is gone already. Also, Russia merely wants to defend its right to exist and won't let itself be destroyed and wiped off the geopolitical map, so it's always worth listening to both sides, of course. I don't have a uh, dog in this fight. Western allies are using Ukraine for their, quote, dirty game and an ultimate drive for world domination, Putin says. U.S. satellites may be a legitimate target if used in conflict in Ukraine, from the Russian diplomat. U.S. commercial satellites may be seen as legitimate targets in case they are used in the conflict in Ukraine. Quasi-civil infrastructure may be a target for retaliation strike. And Russia warns the West, we can target your commercial satellites. This one's from the Jerusalem Post. Senior Russian foreign minister said the commercial satellites from the United States and its allies could become legitimate targets for the Russians if they were involved in the war in Ukraine. So it'll be interesting again to see if anything comes of that. Now, NATO will not allow Putin to win the war uh, he started against Ukraine and will provide assistance to the Ukrainian armed forces for... Guess what? As long as it takes. <laughs> Years, decades, however long, to the last Ukrainian, they said. Ukraine withdrew from talks with Moscow on the U.S. order. This is something you guys have heard me talk about many times before. And also, too, remember, if you're just tuning in for the very first time, you're missing the context from 59 other videos that I've done. So uh, keep in mind some of the comments that I make. Uh, you know, you got to have the right frame. 
Putin claimed that Ukraine pulled out of peace talks with Moscow in March on an order from the United States, the Kremlin said Thursday. The text was ready, and then suddenly the Ukrainian side went off the radar. The Ukrainian side declared its unwillingness to continue negotiations, saying, uh, we want this, but in this case, we're talking about a complete unwillingness on the part of Ukraine. Ukraine's leader said he would not negotiate with Russia as long as Putin was president. Kiev and Moscow have stalled since March, with both sides blaming the other for the stalemate. My only commentary for that is recall the flight Boris Johnson took into Ukraine, and then Kiev the next day said, mm, no negotiations for us. A little fishy, huh? Acute threats from Russia, but China is the main challenge as the U.S. military, uh, I suppose, refocuses its attention. Russia's invasion of Ukraine highlights the acute threats posed by Moscow, but, ding, 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 China is the most consequential challenge for the United States, the U.S. military said in a statement of its overall strategy released on Thursday. China presents the most consequential and systemic challenge, while Russia poses acute threats, both to vital U.S. national interests and abroad to the homeland. Strategy highlights Chinese rhetoric over self-ruled Taiwan, which Beijing has vowed to take control of by force, if necessary, as destabilizing factor that risks miscalculation and threatens peace. I'll be curious if uh, they make a move on Taiwan uh, next month or uh, <laughs> during the midterms. That would be interesting. I don't think it'll be during the midterms, but there's been a lot of intel circulating of uh, Chinese military buildup uh, on a lot of islands, so they might be in the beginning stages of prepping for an invasion. We'll see. Keep you guys updated. The Department of Defense will support robust deterrence of Russian aggression against vital U.S. national interests, including our treaty allies. Emphasize the need for collaboration with allied countries to counter the dangers posed by China and Russia, saying such cooperation is the foundational for U.S. national security interests. This includes nuclear employment of any scale, and it includes high-consequence attacks of a strategic nature that use non-nuclear means. Any nuclear attack by North Korea, also keep an eye on them as tensions escalate between North and South Korea. The U.S. said any nuclear attack by North Korea against the United States or its allies and partners is unacceptable and will result in the end of that regime. Full stop. Kim Jong-un has declared the country an irreversible nuclear power, effectively ending negotiations over his banned arms program. And China's stated intention to absorb Taiwan, possibly by military force, as the United States continues to supply arms and give political support to the self-governed island. Again, we can't fight a proxy war both with Taiwan and Ukraine. Putin, world faces most dangerous decades since World War II. We see this headline on a uh, daily, if not weekly, basis now. Putin warns the world is facing the most dangerous decade since the end of the World War II, denouncing the West for inciting war and playing a bloody geopolitical game. A Russian leader said he had no regrets about sending troops into Ukraine more than eight months after Moscow began its operation. And Russia's Lavrov holds call with Chinese counterpart, Thanks them for the support on Ukraine. Interesting one. Again, Lavrov spoke by phone with Wang Yi, the Chinese counterpart. Thanked Wang for what it called China's support for Russia's position on a settlement to the conflict in Ukraine. China's willing to expand relations with Russia from the Chinese foreign minister. Again, another article from Wang Yi. Beijing is willing to deepen its relationship with Russia at all levels all levels to forge closer political and economic ties in the face of Western sanctions. So all we've done is push uh, these other superpowers closer together, push more nations into joining the BRICS uh, <laughs> and further away from the West. So I think that uh, our strategists should all be fired to say the least. Putin said on Thursday, the United States was wrong to ruin relations with China over Chinese Taiwan. And another uh, bunch of woke garbage. Democrat congressman says arming Ukraine is about protecting woke values. Now, for the YouTube uh, censors and uh, my wrong think thought police out there, these are all quoted. Here's the article. Read it. 
Don't just censor me. Ukraine is essential because Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin issued a statement quoting, Ukraine is essential because Russia is mean to gay and transgender people. Yes, really. Raskin released a statement after 30 Progressive Democrats watered down their call for peace talks in a letter to Joe Biden. Raskin is apparently concerned that any slide in support for Ukraine represents an abandonment of woke values. Oh no. Moscow, this is quoted, Moscow right now is a world center of anti-feminist, anti-gay, anti-trans hatred, as well as the homeland of replacement theory for export. Whatever that last sentence means. Beats me. Putin is an imperialist, a colonizer, and uh, Raskin went on to demonize the entire country. Quoting, okay, verbatim, Moscow right now is a hub of corrupt tyranny, censorship, authoritarian repression, police violence, propaganda, government lies, disinformation, war crimes, and opposing fascist views, supporting the urgent principles of democratic pluralism. <sighs> And something about defending democracy and freedom to wrap it up. I think it's interesting because you could use all of those adjectives uh, describing Moscow, depending on which side of uh, the global uh, tug of war rope. You could call either side that if you see what I'm getting at. The bizarre intersection of sending advanced weaponry to foreign conflicts in the name of defending far-left identity politics reared its head right at the start of the war. And an interesting one back in February, the head of no other than MI6, who includes his, guess what, preferred pronouns in his Twitter bio, I feel safer already. Well, he faced backlash for suggesting that a large part of the war in Ukraine was about LGBT plus rights. And with the tragedy and destruction unfolding so distressingly in Ukraine, we should remember the values of hard-won freedoms that distinguish us from Putin. None more! None more matter more than LGBT plus rights. So let's resume our series of tweets, and uh, he goes by he, him. So just uh, an absolute joke, and this has nothing to do with my thoughts on LGBTQ, I don't care what you are, but uh, world leaders making, it's almost making a joke is really what, what this comes down to. They're making a joke of something very serious with the possibility of us all being fried in a nuclear holocaust and saying it's about woke progressive uh, agendas. You know, people are being mercilessly slaughtered by the tens of thousands on the ground and these people including heads of intelligence agencies are saying that it's uh for gay rights uh, <laughs> unfathomable biden says u.s wants to avoid war with china washington does not seek conflict with beijing even though everything we're doing says otherwise and that the U.S. must responsibly manage the increasingly intense competition with China. Though the U.S. intends to avoid escalation with China, we are going to compete. So, a little bit of a flip-flop on the rhetoric there. And U.S. ready to protect Asian allies with nukes, Biden official says in Tokyo. Nice. It's a hugely alarming scenario when world leaders and government officials representing nuclear armed superpowers appear to increasingly be spouting nuclear rhetoric and warnings in an almost casual manner. Again, this is happening daily, minimum on a weekly basis as things escalate. Now, Washington is ready to protect its Asian allies using nukes if they came under attack. Nuclear conventional and missile defense. U.S. will use the full range of U.S. defense capabilities to defend our allies. And it also applies to the defense of Seoul and Tokyo as ironclad. So if you guys found anything interesting, make sure to smack the like button, comment down below, subscribe. Have a good weekend. I will see you guys in the next one.